it's Rad Fox here, and today's project was to install an APR intercooler on the Golf R. Um, the project took me about four hours. Of course, I took lunch in the middle, and um, of course, having to film it made it take longer than it should have. Um, the uh, APR instructions that actually came with the kit were really nice, uh, very helpful. Um, I try to follow along with APR steps through the video. I'll have each step, um, you know, labeled in the video. Uh, but I didn't do all the steps in their exact order, and in some of the steps I actually combined them together and th th did them all in one sweep. So hopefully you can follow along with that and it won't be too confusing. Um, their instructions don't have any information on the, uh, the uh, DAP R, or the uh, DAP R, the DAP sensor up here on the front, so I've got that covered in the video. The other thing that was sort of surprising to me was that um, this car actually is equipped. There's a step in there where you're supposed to disconnect the um, headlight washer um, washer fluid lines. And I sort of skipped over and said, I don't have no damn headlight washer fluid uh, lines or whatever. But sure as shit, I do. The lines are actually, there's a pump in there on the, uh, on the windshield washer uh, reservoir that actually runs up here to the front. And the lines are mounted in here. So, I don't know. If you guys are interested somebody out there could probably um, retrofit on the motors and put the wipers on on the front on the headlights and or maybe we could even use these uh, lines to run up and put uh, a mister up on the uh, condenser and on the intercooler um, for racing so I don't know I'll take a look at that later but um, that's something that was sort of a gotcha the other thing that uh, I don't like um, with the design here of the uh, front bumper cover is that it has three snap-in points on each side up underneath the uh, fenders and um, on my previous Volkswagens uh, there was usually a track in the front fascia or the front bumper cover actually would slide in and then you put one you know one screw in to lock it but on this car here there's one screw that holds it but there's three tabs and you sort of have to wiggle and pry it out and I there is a tab in there but I don't know if you can really get to it I I looked at it I couldn't see how to do it so I end up just having to pull it out and I end up breaking part of one of the uh, um, one of the holes where one of the tabs locks in on this side over here but it still allowed um, you know it wasn't bad enough of a break or anything like that where it deformed it or anything like that it still popped in and clicked in and I can still put the screw in and it looks great but be careful with that when you're doing it yourself that's probably the worst part of the whole thing and it, it's possible you may not even have that problem but I think with how I had initially pulled it it sort of was binding on the tab and it really bit it really hard and then I just sort of had to muscle and pull it super hard to get it to pop off and that's what made it break. So hopefully that won't happen to you, so be careful with that. Um, otherwise, let's see, the other thing to watch out for are the, uh, the clips. There's two clips in there with uh, rubber mounts that mount onto the intercooler that snap into the uh, core support that's in here that holds the radiator in, um, and the condenser and the intercooler. And those guys are really stiff and you have to really pry on them, but at the same time, if you over pry, you're going to probably snap them. So be careful with those guys. Um, what else can I warn you about? I think everything else is pretty good. Um, the, when you take out the core support in here, you'll see in the video, you're going to want to scribe all of, your, um, all of your mounting points to make sure you put the car back together um, exactly the same way to keep all the alignment. And then um, with uh, my car, I didn't actually have it jacked up level. <laughs> I jacked it up level, but then when I set it down on the jack stand on this side, it wasn't completely level. But uh, since I marked everything, put everything back together the same way, uh, I doubt I have any alignment problems. But really, try you should probably try to keep everything nice and level and square and mark everything when you do it yourself. Um, I don't have any uh, <coughs> data in this video. This video is already way too long showing the whole install. So we can't really talk about uh, performance gains or anything like that. We'll do that in another video. So I wanted to weigh this intercooler before I put it in the car, but uh, it turns out my scale's broken. So uh, I couldn't actually weigh it. So if any of you know what it weighs, please uh, send it to me in the comments and then I'll add it in the video. And uh, I think that's about it. So enjoy the install. All right, dang, look at this box, man. APR label. ECS tuning tape. <laughs> Let's get this thing open. Let's take a look inside of this thing.
see my code. Some weather stripping. Looks like a little instruction manual down in here. These are written for North American Mark 7. Look at that. Two and a quarter inches thick. Wow. Yeah, I think that these will just uh, slide right on. I think that these rubber mounts, the stock ones will just go right on that. Yeah. And then here's where the clips clip in. Clip in. Looks like it doesn't have to have anything done to it. Really? No parts? Huh. Oh, wow. This is pretty amazing. Wow. That's gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> wow, this thing is a fucking brick, though. I should weigh it. I don't even have a scale here. Okay, here's page one. Reuse all your fasteners, it's for a Golf R, basic mechanical skills. All right, so step one, first thing is jack the car up. You can take the wheels off if you want. Um, the screws that are up underneath in here, if you either have to turn the wheels, if you're gonna leave them on, to be able to access these, uh, to get this liner out of here, or um, you can take the wheels off and you can get to these screws. All right, so step number two is to uh, take out the screw for the uh, APR cold air intake. And step number three is to remove the clamp from the back and remove the, inner, or the um, cold air intake. Okay, so to get this off, I'm gonna use the T25 and some channel locks. So let's get this screw out of here first. Cold air intake. Okay, there's that first screw and pen to catch this stuff, right? And then the channel locks to remove this clamp. Pop it all out of here. And then we gotta get this little vacuum line off. Oh, yeah, let's take that off like that. Okay, cold air intake off. Okay, so there's a little bit of dust in this line right here. I'm just gonna wipe it out and I'm gonna leave this rag in here. Okay, so here's step four. Step four is we're going to remove these two screws from the front grill. And actually step five is to lift the grill out and forward. Okay, so here's the first screw and the second screw. So the Torx T25, I've switched over to a screw gun. Make this faster. Those two screws are out. So I wanted to show you this. This is the uh, first discrepancy uh, on the uh, T25s. 
Um, there are no screws in my car in these holes. I don't know if they should be there or not, uh, but they are not there. So let's move on to the next step. Okay, so here's step seven. And we are going to uh, disconnect this um, hood latch cable from inside of here. We just have to pop this up, pop it open. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, shit. Great. I got it. Okay, so what was that that just fell out of here? Okay, so here is the uh, latch mechanism opened up. And uh, here's the little ball that's in here that we need to uh, pull out of this little track here. And then we're going to pull this out. Okay, so we are disconnected. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Um, it says here, do not close the hood with this joint disconnected. Because then I assume we cannot get to this damn latch and get the hood back open. So that would be a big problem. So let's... Uh, not close the hood okay people okay so here's step eight we got to remove the uh, six t30 screws that uh, hold these uh or that uh, bolt these front supports on for the front uh, fascia front of the car okay so t30 these are long Take this one off. Let's see if we got, or at least room to swing it around. How do you, yeah. Okay, so we got this off now. Okay, so here's step nine. And we've got to remove the uh, screw from the back of the headlight. Actually, no, we're gonna loosen the uh, screw from this rear part of the headlight. And for the uh, front up here, we're gonna completely take that out. And so um, here's the front headlight on the R. And so here's that front screw that we're gonna take out. And then if you go back here to the back where the hood latch was at, and if you look down in here, you can see that there's a, a screw back here that we're gonna loosen. And that's so we can pivot the headlight. Okay, so we're going to remove this screw that I just showed you. And there's a little spacer and stuff on it. I want to be careful with this. Okay, so I already showed you exactly where it's at. So this one here, we're just going to loosen it. Okay, it's loosened. Now I'm going to do it on the other side. Take out this inside screw. Okay, so step 10 is to remove the uh, T25 screws from the uh, underbelly of the car. So we're going to go ahead and take off this right now from underneath. So here's step 11, and um, it's to remove these uh, T25 screws underneath the butt. Okay, so we're underneath the front of the car, and uh, these are the uh, six screws we're going to take out down here. And we're also gonna take out um, these front screws right here, these three. That's actually the next step. You don't want any of these to strip out when you put them back in so you've got to be really careful otherwise these things are just gonna all fall out and then you're gonna have floppy plastic down here for the rest of your life in your car I mean you can replace the clips though that hold the screws in but <clears throat> I 
Okay, so that covers off. And then we've got these off here. So I can pull that. Remove the, uh, or loosen up the uh, intercooler hose. Okay, so let's do that, step 12. <clears throat> and pull the hoses off. Yeah, they're saying go ahead and just pull them off completely. We're underneath the car. And uh, again, the next step is to um, remove these uh, intercooler hoses. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that here and here. And this is the driver's side um, here and here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a flathead common tip on my screw gun here. Okay, so that's easy, right? Um, so that is a, all right, it's a seven millimeter, all right? I'll make sure that when I put this back on next time that I'll be able to get to the head on this. Alright, we got that one. Alright, let's pull this damn thing off. Okay, there's that hose. And this one don't want to come off. There it is. Oops, get the fan. I don't know why I told you this first, but... Let's go. You are off of here, sucker. Same as this one. Okay, so number 13, step 13, is they finally want us to take off these uh, little pieces here on the side. These little air dam deflectors, whatever, here on the sides. And then we're going to go ahead and jump up here to step 14 too. And it's to uh, take out the uh, wheel well covers. So let's go do that. Okay, so we're on the driver's side and we're going to take out... Actually, yeah, I think we need to take out all three of these. I take out this one. This one. And then that should, yeah, that'll let that come through. I okay, so I just turned the uh, steering wheel here um, so I can get to these screws. And you can see there's one right here. And I drop that one out. And then uh, we've got another one right here. And maybe I should take the wheels out, I swear. Yeah, maybe I should. All right, you gotta go find your key. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. Look at that pattern. And then um, it should be a 17 millimeter, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a uh, uh, 11 sixteenths because that's all I could quickly find. Okay, so this next step here, 15, um, is to undo this screw up here. Um, I've also got to still undo this one here. I'll show you here in a second. But this one's up underneath um, on the wheel well here. And so um, if you look up here on this liner, hell. Okay, well, you can see there's a screw here, and I still got to do this one too. So these two here got to be taken out. And this one. Okay, so we're good there. Let's do the other side. Why? Okay, so you can see here, this is the passenger side. All right. God, these kids are bad. All right. All right, so step 16 is to separate this um, harness that goes to the uh, headlight washer. Uh, fluid reservoir, so I don't have that Okay, so here's uh step 17 is to um, Obviously have to uh, disconnect and rotate this connector on the washer pump, which I don't have so now 18 
carefully pull the upper corners of the bumper away from the mounting brackets. Okay, so this is to remove the front uh, fascia here now. So this one here, I'm not sure I want to do. I don't know if I want to do this myself here. Let me see. Well, I guess I'll pull on it and see. I got to make sure that everything's disconnected um, with this car because of the uh, the um, DAP sensor here. I need to disconnect this, which it's not giving me a step to do unless it's coming up next. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, they're saying slightly pull this forward on step 19. Step 20 is to disconnect the uh, parking sensors, which I do have. And then of course they say, yeah, uh, go ahead and pull it off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out right here. I don't know. Let me see. How... Okay, I've gotta pop this out. And on this design here, I don't like this one. It actually sort of snaps in here. This lower piece snaps into this one. Um, I can't remember, but I can't remember. I think it was on my, uh, on my TDI. Um, I believe that, I can't remember, but I believe you had to just pop it a little bit. And then there was actually a track and it slid into it and then would lock in. Whereas this one here, you have to pop, pop, pop. So this is a little bit scary to me because you don't want to get this deformed at all because then your car is going to look uh like shit for the rest of the time you have it so let's see let's try to be real careful here let's take a look shit. there ah damn it look at that shit before that to fucking bend it Oh, that pisses me off. Okay. Yeah, this is absolutely horrible. Look at what I did here. I chingered this. I freaking broke this piece of plastic right here. <sighs> what a pain in the ass. This is stupid. I don't know how you're supposed to get to these little tabs um, right here to bend these down from underneath, but whatever. Uh, at least the screw will hold this corner back and hopefully this will line up pretty good and these will snap in good, I hope. All right, so anyways, I believe this is the parking sensors. So we got to undo this plug right here. And we still got to get the, uh, undo the DAP plug down here. I got to look in there real carefully at that. Okay, there's that one. There's that off of there. So I'm under the car here and I'm looking up underneath at the DAP sensor or the DAP radar. Um, we've got to get this plug off of here. You can see this here. Um, you just have to compress the this edge right here on both sides. I did one side, held it with my hand and then uh, depressed the other side. You can see there's a little tab here and then you can disconnect that. So we got that. So now that I got the uh, parking sensors undone, got the DAP sensor undone, I pried the uh, front fascia out of here. Now with these screws that were supposed to be here, um, without them here, we can uh, slide this fascia out of this track here. All right, so just a peek here. Um, we've got to slide this front fascia here out of this little track here that sort of has it locked in so i'm going to start um, just wiggling it here and uh, so i'm going to start trying to separate this and i'm going to start uh, pushing this front clip forward and um, sort of prying it out sort of wiggling it out actually of this track right here so let's do that Something else in here though is that my trusty chair here to hold this up. Okay, this is sort of strange to me. I actually have, it appears, that I have uh, fluid pumps up here to these uh, 
missing windshield wipers or not windshield wipers these missing headlight washers this is crazy why i cannot believe this part of the system is uh installed on here i saw the line when i was looking down here underneath on the passenger side i saw that i had a pump on here and i thought well what the hell is this and sure as shit it goes up underneath here okay so now you have to disconnect these so let me go ahead and do that but this is sort of interesting i mean it's like would i want to add uh wipers on here or should i remove this i mean this is just dead weight right why is this on here this is crazy i guess for you guys that want to mod your your r and uh put the windshield wipers on or the windshield wipers damn it the headlight washers and wipers then looks like most of it's here well, now that I found out that I guess I have the washer pump uh, and maybe the nozzles, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. I Do these pop up, pop open? I don't think they do. This is ridiculous. I'm still shocked at this. I can't believe this. Okay, so we got to go do this step now. This was step 17. And you can see here that we have to rotate the uh, pump nozzle, rotate this guy, and then disconnect this here. Washer tank line from the pump by squeezing on the two blue portions of the fitting. Rubber cap to prevent the washer fluid from spilling out. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Okay, so we actually have to deal with this bullshit. So there's a little rubber cap that comes with the kit with the APR intercooler to plug onto here to keep this water from leaking. Um, it says we can rotate this and it looks like we actually can. So I'm gonna pull this out of here a little bit. And then, uh, oh God, I don't wanna break this fucker. And then you're supposed to squeeze these two blue plugs there. Oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, let's go. Put the rubber plug back on. Nice. Okay. And let's pull this out of here. All right. Now, finally, we can remove this. Wow. I cannot believe that there is a damn pump squirter on here um, when it's covered up. I don't think there's any way that it can pop pop open. I don't think it's uh, mechanized or whatever. So I'm going to go set this over on the ground with some cloth underneath the corners. Okay, so here's uh, step 22. And it's to remove these uh, three T30 screws right here on um, the support bracket that the front clip fit onto. Um, but to actually get this out, um, there's um, two little tabs that have to be pressed in on the sides in here to get this to unlock so you can lift it off. And so I'm going to go ahead and also pull out the little um, air dam pieces that are um, in here on the sides. There's three little clips that hold those in. So I'm going to pull those three clips out too. And then I can pull, turn, turn them to the side, pull them out. And then I can get to the little tab with the screwdriver and pry this one and then pry this side so I can pull this whole bracket, um, this whole support bracket out. We're going to take out the three T30s. You can see if you uh, you have to pry this tab down and pop those out and then there's one down there too down here right there I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out too there you go, right there okay there's that one and then there's one more right down here at the bottom can you see that yeah there you go. All right, now with uh, three clips loose in here, we should be able to pull this damn thing out of here. Oh, shoot, there's one more. No, there's one more. Okay. okay, so let's get this out of the way. Oh, this damn tab to hell. I can. There we go. This one here. Those three are, and then I'll rotate this out of here. It's got an electrical arm to there. 
Now, per the instructions, we're supposed to remove this front bracket, and now I can uh, pry this out, pry this little tab right here on both sides, and uh, get this out. All right, there's that. And let's do this one. Okay, so according to APR, step 23 is we're gonna remove this screw here. And uh, from the side of the headlight, and then we're gonna carefully slide the headlights forward. Disconnect the electrical connectors on the back of the headlights and remove the headlights from the car. Damn. We've gotta remove this electrical connector off the back of the headlight. And I've slid the headlight forward a little bit now that all the bolts are loose and are taken out. This one here just has to be loosened. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this connector off. All right. So really all it should be is just to pry this clip back and get that out. Okay, now that we got that connector out and unplugged, we can remove the headlight and put it away somewhere safe. So here's step 25, and this is uh, to neck, or <laughs> disconnect the, uh, the connector here for the uh, hood latch and for the uh, crash sensor, and there's a crash sensor on both sides of the car. This happens to be the uh, passenger side of the car. And so you can see here, we're gonna remove these two connectors, and also the one over here on the driver's side. This one right here. So let's get to it. Come on. Push. All right, good. There's that sensor. And it says pull the tab away. Pretty hard to pull it away without using something here. Okay, pull it away. There it goes. Okay, crash sensor one off. Let's go do the other. Bye-bye. Okay, so step 26 is disconnect the electrical connector to the uh, air temperature sensor, which is mounted up here on the front of the car, right here. And so we're gonna take off the connector and then separate it back to here. Oh, lighting is terrible, isn't it? Okay, that one's gone. And now, also, I'm thinking I'm gonna have to separate this out of here for the DAP sensor too. Damn it. Is it really that fucking tight? Shit. Okay, there it is. I had to just pull this out. But now with the DAP sensors here, we're gonna have to pop these out. And it looks like uh, I can just use a little uh, body panel tool here. Damn, is there in deep? Okay, let's see. are out of the way all right we also have to do the horns um, not sure why that's really in the way but maybe it is so let's uh, disconnect the horn okay so step 27 is we're supposed to remove these outer uh, two large 16 millimeter crash bolts and install two long uh, bolts that were supposedly supplied by APR in the kit, uh, but I did not get that in this kit. So I'll work around it. We'll see what we can do. Um, it looks like what the trick is, there's a couple things going on here, is that as soon as we undo these main bolts, there's a lot of weight in this crash bumper, and there's two screws on each side that are holding it to this plastic support for the radiator. We have to make sure that we don't let this weight stress this plastic um, stress these screws and break this um, housing or this uh, bracket, this plastic bracket that holds the radiators in. So that's part of it. The other part is is that um, I assume once we have this out of here and this out of here, um, 
you know, we're going to need to make sure we keep the uh, radiator supported, keep all this weight from just hanging. We want to make sure it's supported properly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my uh, little chair here to be my support um, for this radiator. And then I'm going to... I'm gonna mark these here. It says you're supposed to mark these, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark these first. Um, mark exactly where these two screws are at. See if we can scribe it or something on both sides because we wanna make sure this goes back exactly the same way. So I'm gonna mark this one here and this one here. Let's see what we can do with that. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'll probably just go ahead and take these out first and, uh, and then I'll take all of these out and remove this. Well, actually, can't just do all of them. I've gotta do these two as well. So probably the smart thing to do is actually do these two, um, scribe, mark, and remove these four that are on the sides, two on each side, and then I'll deal with these four large bolts and pull the uh, crash, crash guard, crash bumper, or whatever it is off the car. Okay, we're gonna tackle these two right here first. So I'm going to use a little uh, pick here, just a straight pick. And I'm just going to put a line right here underneath this bracket. I don't think it, I don't even know if it matters on this one or not, but I'm going to do it anyways. So let's see. Okay, so what are we really worried about here? Uh, probably this, this depth here, actually. So you can see it's slotted, so that means this whole assembly can move like this. So we need to make sure that when we put this back on, that we line this up exactly the same way. I'm gonna put a line here, right here on the front. Okay, so I scribed in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on this lower one. Okay. Show you here a little bit closer what's going on here. So we need to mark this um, bracket here because there's a slot in here and this whole um, mounting assembly here can move forwards or backwards and we don't want any of this stuff crooked. So we're assuming that the factory put this front of this car together square and so we need to make sure we capture this when we put this back together we need to make sure all this stuff lines up exactly the same way so i've went and scribed in here and scratched the plastic um, bracket here where it's supposed to line up on here and let me show you something you see where the screws at here and you can see the washer here and it's a little bit it's almost near the end here actually it is about touching but check this out um, on this lower one right here see um, this washer is actually sticking past here um, so this is why this is so critical because if you just were to put this back together and just you know set it at I don't know the same distance on all the brackets set the screws to the same depth on these brackets you'd end up with this probably crooked so um, you can see this washer sticking past the edge and then if we go look over here on this side it's totally totally the opposite right look at this the washers way far back in here and the bracket sticking out past it so again I've marked these I've scribed these so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out once we take these out it's over okay, yep this sucker's in my way over though over. Okay, that's out of the way. Take out this little bracket. Yeah, it looks like I really should be careful of that. Walk these over. Um, let me. That's what's going to be fun too. Alright, now here's the scary one. This is going to 
Mark the back side of this too. Okay, and I should have probably done that over here already. It may have sort of lined up on its own anyways. Yeah, it looks like it will. I'm not so good about that. Ooh, okay, so that's now. Support the weight here. bumper off <laughs> okay so you saw that uh, I didn't use the uh, long bolts so that was step 27 I didn't do step 28 um, I had already done these screws first before I took the big ones out I already marked all these so 29 is already done 30 um, looks like they wanted me to take the top ones out, but I went ahead and took um, the lower ones out. I'm not sure. It might be pinching the uh, support here together, so I may have to do that, but I'm going to see if I can leave it. And what's next? They're saying slide the crash beam off. Step 31, I've already done that. And then next they're saying 32, remove both uh, air guides, which we already did because I needed them out of the way so I could get to the little clip to remove that top piece that the front uh, front clip slides into so we've already done that now it's time to <clears throat> pry apart the uh, these clips that hold um, the condenser radiator and all that in these mounts so we got to pry this here wedge it apart and let's see what does this say this is step 33 Yeah, by pulling the core, fo core forward and pushing the intercooler back, uh, pry it, push the intercooler back, push up on the bottom tab of the clip to release the, from the core support. Okay, so that's 33. That's what we're going to go do. And again, 34, remove the side intercooler clip on the opposite side. Again, some force we need to press up the lower tabs through to separate. They're showing what that sort of looks like with the, the other one removed. So that is our next steps, 34. And then 35 is something different. So, right back to that one. Right. I just leave it there. So, just like that. Pry up. Pry up. There we go. Right there. Ah, there it is. 
Okay, so now that we have those clips loosened out, uh, the next thing it says remove the plastic guides that cover the AC condenser uh, mounting tab. Simply lift up on the tabs uh, of the guide and lift to remove the guides from the condenser. Okay, so we'll slide those out. So it looks like we do need to separate the AC condenser over here so that it can swing that way. Right? Okay, so this clip right here, right here, we need to press that in so we can lift this out. Lift it up. There you go. Okay, wiggled it past it, press it in, lift it up. It's going to lift out of here. Is there one over here like that? Yes. So let's get to this one too. It's all in out anyways. I mean, if this isn't holding it no more, what the fuck is holding it? Right? That's my question. So we did step 35, right? And we lifted this up. Uh, press in on the upper tabs on the stop, stock intercooler to release the AC condenser. Okay, so we already did that. With the test press in, lift the condenser out, remove it out of the way, repeat on both sides. Step 37, maneuver the AC condenser out from behind. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and swing this out. And obviously in the new picture there, they've got the shroud or this mounting assembly off. So. I think now that I've got this here, I can um, get this down off of this peg right here on the radiator, or actually on the intercooler that's holding this all together. So I'm gonna separate this here right now. balance right okay so step 38 we just sort of did that uh, we basically dropped this support off um, off of these lower tabs that are on the bottom of the intercooler so 38 is done now using a screwdriver press to release the two tabs holding us in right here okay so we got to get these uh, tabs off here that hold the intercooler on to the radiator so let's do that real quick All this stuff is plastic, so. <laughs> scary. Press all this shit. It gets fragile and more brittle over time, obviously. Okay, so there's that one. It's like so damn close. To it, really. There it is. Okay, gotcha. What you gotta do is pull this away. 
Looks like it's supposed to slide. Okay, so I've just um, unlatched this, you know, tilted the uh, stock intercooler forward and then pressed it down. And look, there's a bunch of crap down in there. So we'll clean all this out as we're doing this. But uh, I've got to press it out around or push down out around this tab right here. And then we can take this off. Does it? 